DB48X is a modern implementation of RPL, or Reverse Police Lisp, a programming language invented and designed by Hewlett Packard in the 1980s. RPL, like all HP uh, calculator systems, is based on a stack where you enter numbers. So if I want to multiply these two insanely great numbers, I simply type the first one, hit enter, then type the second one, and hit the multiply key after. And if I want to add one to this number, I type one plus, and I added one. The same principle applies for other operations. For instance, I can divide 12 by 13. And as you can see, I get an exact fraction, the benefit being that if I invert this fraction, I will get an exact result as well. There are multiple ways to display numbers, and I can, for instance, decide to change this with a menu that lets me select the display format options one of them is mixed number fractions, which you see at the top left. So I hit the shift key once a second time, and then I hit the first function key on the left, and I switch to mixed fra fraction format. I can hit the exit key to hide the menu again, and I'm back to seeing my stack in its full glory. Now, if I add the two numbers, because I'm in mixed fraction mode, you see that I have my number shown as a mixed number fraction. So it knows how to convert between number types as it goes. I can also enter decimal numbers like this with a decimal dot and multiply them exactly the same way. As you can see, there are separators to make numbers more readable. And these separators, they are by default, there are three uh, grouped by three on the left of the decimal dot and by five on the right. All this can be configured with the separators menu. Um, and uh, for instance, here, if I want to have three digit separators for the mantissa, you see the frag five, I hit shift once, then the F2 key and I'm going to shift to three digits on the right of the dot as well. Um, numbers can be displayed with a number of decimals after the dot. So for instance, if I use three fix, I'm going to only have three digits after the decimal dot with rounding as appropriate. The scientific mode is just like on HP calculators, means that you always have a power behind the number, the power of 10. And the engineering mode is the same thing, but with powers of three for the exponent. So you see that the second level of the stack is uh, shown as 97 dot something times 10 to the power of three. And if I multiply this by 10, I'm going to have 974, and by 10 again, it's jumped to the next path of three. The sig mode is similar to fix, except it doesn't display the zeros if there are any. So if I select 12 sig, for instance, I'm going to display that like this. But if I have a number with more digits, it's going to only display 12 of them. 12 significant digits. And finally, PREC is the precision I use for computations. If I want, for instance, to compute pi with 60 digits, I can select a precision of 60. I'm going to display 60 with SIG as well. And I'm going to ask for the arctangent of 1. Uh, which won't work because I'm in degrees by default, so I'm going to shift to the ra radians mode. Radian, uh, that's the modes menu on the plus minus key, and I select F2 to select radians. Then I'm going to go to the previous menu with shift and A, that's the back menu uh, key, 
changed. So I'm back to my previous menu. And now I'm going to do my arc tangent again. Um, and so that's a shifted function. And I multiply this by 4. And if I subtract pi from this, so pi is in the constants. So it's shift i key. I subtract pi uh, from this, which I want as a numerical value. Um, so I need the uh, I need the math menu real and I want to convert to a number and I subtract that and you see that there was an error on the last digit given the precision that I was given. So the computation is generally accurate up to the last digit. The last digit might be off by one or two or a little bit depending on the computation. And uh, so you have seen how the menus work. There is also a command line uh, that lets you edit the numbers. So that's like for RPL calculators of old, where I edit numbers like this. I shift left and right. And uh, I can insert the number in the editor again by hitting the right key um, or down key. That's uh, bringing me back the editor there. And I can enter a number with a fairly large exponent as well. So this calculator has fewer limitations than what you find in traditional calculators. It can compute with very large number of digits and it can compute on very large numbers as well. I can square this thing easily and you see that it keeps going with really, really large numbers. So I'll let you explore uh, what the limit is, but in practice I think it's uh, 2 to the power 60 for the exponent or something like that. So it's not unlimited, but it goes pretty high. So in terms of operations, um, a lot has been done to make things relatively easy to use. So let's say that you want to use complex numbers. And by easy, I mean easy to remember, but also efficient to do. So let's say that you work with complex numbers. And complex numbers, you see there is a CPLX next to the STO key. So I'm going to invoke the complex menu there. And you see that I have I and an angle to enter numbers either in A plus IB format. So I'm going to enter a number like this and then 3I4 and I multiply these two and I get this result. And if I take the last result, um, so these are the last arguments for the last operation, I divide instead and you see that I get results that are exact with fractions so when I have a fraction like I want to know what sorry I want to know what 11 divided by 25 is from a decimal point of view, I can simply hit the EEX key uh, time times tends to the power something, and that switches back to decimal and back. If I want to enter a complex number in polar formats, so I can, for instance, select, let me go back to, sorry, um, I want to go back to the modes menu, uh, and I'm going to switch back to degrees, because you're going to see it's going to be more accurate that way, um, and shift and back menu to get back to my complex menu. So. I enter the modulus, then the angle, and it keeps the modulus and the ang angle exact. And you see that I can do something like multiply or add numbers that way, and I get exact results. Sometimes it doesn't fit on the screen because it's too big. So when that's the case, I can select a smaller number of, of significant digits to be displayed. I, I keep doing my computation 
with 60 digits that's probably overkill the default is 24 which is a pretty good um, trade-off between the, the number of significant digits and what you actually need and you see that it's being displayed so I prefer to have five for the fractional part let me get back to the five that I had before uh, by the way if you're in a different country you may be using different separators so that can be configured as well so for instance uh, if you're French you would typically use um, a comma as a separator instead of a dot so you can switch like this and if I think you're German you're going to use separators that are ticks instead of spaces and you might find this more readable that way so there is a lot of things you can configure that way to make things more readable for you there is also something that is relatively new in the development of this project which is support for HMS values so if I hit the dot key a second times you see that this switch is to this DMS mode and um, it's degree minutes seconds so I'm going to have this number like this and if I add for instance 3 degrees and 58 minutes and 40 seconds or 41 and I hit the plus key then you see that it's doing the computations that are exact I can also have a fraction of a degree behind this so for instance if I add 0 uh, and I hit one third and I can have the fraction of a degree after that so this is in the frac menu next to the H key and um, you can also do operations on degrees minutes and seconds directly so for instance one two three four five being interpreted as degree minutes second plus uh, three 4106 uh, and I hit the DMS plus and it's going to do the conversion for me and display that as degree minutes seconds uh, I can also take values and convert them between uh, so for instance from a degree minute second uh, notation to a fraction and back to DMS or to a fraction and back to hours minutes and seconds so this is a really convenient uh, a convenient way to operate on a variety of numbers you can also operate on vectors which are next to the 9 key you see the matrix uh, notation and so I can enter a number like this so the space key is where you see eval space and equal at the bottom and I use that to separate my, val my values and I can enter another number like 3, 4, 5 and I can add these two vectors I can multiply this vector by 3 so I can multiply it by a constant I can add a constant uh, these are extensions compared to the RPL you find on HP48 or HP50 calculators and you can do operations on matrices as well so for instance let me enter a 3 by 3 matrix 1, 2, 3 4, 5, 6 7, 8, 9 now if you know something about matrices you probably know that this matrix is not invertible so let's compute its determinant um, there is a very interesting menu you see the tool key next to the A key at the top left of the, of the keyboard if I hit that it guesses which menu applies to the object on the stack so in that case it guesses the mat matrix menu which will let me do I can also get that with shift shift 9 um, that's the same matrix menu let me do that and uh, that, that lets me, so if I have a real number on the stack, for instance, and I hit the ma magic menu, it gives me the number, the menu for, for real numbers. Back to my matrix, I hit that menu, I get the matrix number. So let me compute the determinant for this. 
this matrix and predictably I get zero. So in order for this matrix to become, well, first of all, let me do some simple operations on it. So for instance, I can put this matrix uh, on the stack like this and add two matrices and I can multiply it. Um, now this one still has a determinant of zero, but what I can do is make it invertible by, for instance, let me add 19 here. And now that's a matrix that no longer has a zero determinant. Uh, let me, oops. So that's the determinant for this value here. Uh, so that means I can have the invert as well. And you see that the invert is computed as fractions, so I get all the values uh, exact. Now this is uh, a choice. You can also decide to do computations numerically. Um, that's in the modes menu. Uh, sorry, I got the wrong menu. Uh, modes menu, and then um, I go to math. That's the math modes, and there is a numerical, uh, if I hit F1 now, and I do the same invert, now I'm going to see my matrix. So I probably need to have a smaller number of digits to be able to see that. Um, I see my matrix as uh, a smaller, as, as decimal values. Um, it's always possible to do this uh, uh, the, the, this kind of operation um, can also be done directly by um, using the, the convert to numerical. So if I go to the main menu, A and uh, math, we all, and there I have a two num and two frac. So I can do conversions to fractions or to numbers. Now for just simple numbers, um, this is a shortcut that we saw with uh, the key next to O, the EX key that does this conversion for you.